Well, yeah, thanks everybody for being here. Happy to uh, give a chat to everyone and share some of the insights and things that I've learned along the way. My name is Mike, I'm the VP of technology at, uh, at AltML and I actually recently moved to a more CTO position with some of the joint ventures and things that we're doing. And we're, we're, we're founded in Edmonton, Canada and been around for a number of years. So I'm here to share with you a number of lessons that I've learned as I've progressed through my career in tech over the last 20-ish years, something like that, and, and hope to give you some insight if you're just starting out your tech journey or you're looking to, work, to move towards a more leadership-focused role, if you're looking to you know climb the ladder and try to move from that individual contributor role and, and into something that's a bit more leadership-focused. So before I get started on that, though, I just want to share a brief overview of my background and kind of get everybody a sense of the path that I took to get to where I am today and what I did to get there. So it's a bit of a windy one with a number of different types of uh, experience and, uh, you know, wearing many hats, like presenters have said in the past to kind of that, that role. I, I started coding when I was very young. This might date me. My first language was QBasic and uh, Pascal at a, at a garage sale. I remember buying an old book that had video games in it, but it was all in code. So you had to like type the code in. And if you did that, you could play your video game. So as a kid, I thought, well, wow, that's amazing. So I started to learn how to code, had no idea what I was doing or how the code was working, but uh, then later just sort of fell in love with it. And I kind of knew that tech was uh, the role for me and, and what I wanted to do with my life. So I came, uh, I'm from a small town in Saskatchewan. I came here to Alberta to uh, go to the University of Alberta here. And uh, during those times, I had the opportunity to do some, some tech support roles. So this is before I even started developing and uh, had some great experience there. I uh, troubleshooted Comcast, the American kind of ISP down there, their network. And they were gracious enough to, to let me learn all things networking. So that was one of the key pieces of of information I learned on my, my tech path, got to learn how networks work and a lot about how they shouldn't work and how they don't work and how they fall apart. So it's always great uh, talking to customers when they're having problems. Uh, then I moved to doing some of that in a summer intern role with, with Intuit. So they do tax software. So got a chance to see the problems with, with software from that approach, from, from what happens with customers that are having problems. So that, that was really great. And uh, then I started my development career. I enlisted with uh, Investopedia. They were a small startup at the time, also based in Edmonton. They uh, kind of in the financial education space. And uh, it was my first role. It was a startup. They were very small and I was very excited to start to develop. I've been coding lots as a kid and this was my big opportunity to uh, actually do it for real. And people were paying me for it. So at the time I thought that was amazing. So did that for a while. And uh, they were eventually bought by Forbes at that time. They've kind of traded a couple of hands now, but uh, yeah, they, they sold to a big uh, Forbes company in New York, you know, the magazine company. So at that time I thought, well, it's time to spread my wings, get out there and, and try something new. So at the time I heard that like consultants, they, that, that's where the big money is. That's, you know, the elite technology people are all consultants. I, I was young at the time, so I, I didn't know any better. So I thought, well, let's join Fujitsu and uh, Accenture. They were in Edmonton at the time. So I, I spent a bit of time with Fujitsu. They make, uh, they do a lot of development work for the government, for government of Alberta here. So a lot of those kind of contracts and such. And then Accenture, also a big uh, contracting cover consultancy. So did development for them, front end development, back end development, kind of that full stack thing. And after I did that, I thought, well, hey, I, I see what, uh, I see what we charge our clients and I see what they're paying me. So maybe I can just do this all on my own. So I decided, well, hey, I'm going to start my own consultancy. That's a great idea. Let's do that. So I did that. And uh, that was a whirlwind journey for me. I, I built tons of products. I, I built tons of applications, did a ton of work. Honestly, I don't have enough room on these slides to kind of show that off, but worked for a number of different companies, kind of building stuff for them. And, and having a great time. During that journey, I, I missed the startup world, so was involved in another startup. So co-founded one of those called Sporting Charts in the, in the sporting industry. 
So got a chance to stretch some of my leadership skills there. We, we grew a little bit. Um, we went from zero people and we created a site and it got up to millions of people a month. So did did fairly well there. Unfortunately, I don't drive a Ferrari, so uh, it was good, but uh, we still have our day job. So worked on that, but it was an amazing experience. It really helped me grow as a, a leader. And then uh, I, I tried remote work. I heard that was really great. So got the chance to, to do some consulting down in the US, uh, worked for the US military for a while, which was awesome. And that brings me to where I am today. So a number of years ago, the uh, original founder of um, the Investopedia wanted to start an AI and ML company. And uh, they were very small at the time, only a handful of people and wanted to kind of put this together and do it. So I had the opportunity to join very early on there as the VP of technology. So kind of in charge of development and you know IT, some of the operation stuff like DevOps and all of that. And we grew and are still growing from a small office all the way to three offices now in Edmonton, Calgary, Toronto, and up to about 150 people, a little bit more. We, we keep growing that kind of thing. So that was uh, the amazing journey for me and uh, was the VP of technology and now the CTO of some of our ventures as of recently. So just to explain what AltML does, we work with different industry partners and we create AI and ML products is our goal. So what we want to do is we know AI and ML is a revolution in the technology space. And there's so many different industries that can benefit from it and so much innovation that you can do. So our goal is to come in, work with those companies, see what kind of data they have, see what, what fits from an AI and an ML space. And we want to create joint ventures. We want to create sub startups, if you will, or um, companies that embrace AI and ML, and that's that at the core, and, and they grow. So my my latest role within that company is is being the the CTO, call it a venture CTO. So these very small startups helping to grow and build the dev teams and provide leadership there. So that's basically my background, and that's how I made it to who I am today. And there were a number of lessons learned uh, across the way. And uh, I, as you can see from my background, I come from a very individual contributor style. When I was younger, I was that hardcore developer. I was sort of like, leave me alone. I want to code, lock me in a room, that kind of thing. And through my journey, I had to become more of a leader. I had to move towards building teams, scaling teams, working with people, all of these kind of things. So it was... Uh, a great deal of growth for me. And I learned a number of lessons. Some of those were harder lessons learned than others along the way, but I want to share those with everybody in case you're looking to pursue something like this, or that's what you want to do. And maybe I can save you a couple of bumps in the road. But uh, again, some of this is very subjective. Uh, I you know, had a strong technical background, but coming into it, I didn't have uh, strong soft skill background. So some of the lessons that I learned may not be, the, may seem very obvious to other people, but for me, they were big shifts in mindset or really helped me out. So I'll start with the first one. The first big lesson that I learned is the the paths have many branches and is very uh, ambiguous as to where you can go. So I found this great kind of chart a number of years ago, and uh, it kind of outlined well, here's all the things you could do in technology with your career. There's a whole software development track. There's storage and data, DevOps, all of this amazing stuff. And uh, it's hard looking at all of this and it can seem daunting. And this is only a small subset of that. They're, all of these can branch out and, and they all have different paths as well. So it can be very daunting and uh, there is no real set path. And, and that's kind of okay. And if you're lucky, you may find an amazing environment, so amazing role. Maybe you have an amazing leader or a manager that you're involved with, and they can help you grow. But I wouldn't bank on, on your company or your manager to set your career path. There, You have to set that, and, and you have to explore a little bit. And uh, honestly, it's okay to explore. I've had a lot of junior developers or people just getting into the industry, and they're kind of gunning for a lead role, or, or they want they want something, but they're not sure what it what it is. They really want to move towards something. And uh, the lesson I learned going through this is it's okay to wear lots of hats. It's okay to explore and try some different things. 
uh, if you're in the industry and it's only been a couple of years for you and you don't know exactly what that role is you want and where you want to go, that's, uh, that's okay. And uh, technology is one of those industries that is rapidly shifting. And the role that I'm in now, an AI and ML company, would have been unheard of when I started, when I, when I first got going. So the, the ground is always shifting and there's lots of ways to go. So uh, it's okay that there's no set path. So that was a big lesson for me. The next one is being an amazing developer does not make, make it so that you are an amazing leader. So when I was going through my career growth, I was a very strong developer. I had a lot of tech skills, very logical, very skilled, uh, very problem solvy, uh, loved riddles and hard problems and all of that. And I thought, well, management will, um, will be easy. Leadership is easy, right? It's just a system that you can learn and I'm great at learning systems. So this, this must be something, I'll just be a great leader then, right? Because all of the other tech people and developers will, will love to work with me because I'm a strong technical person. Yeah, that, that's not true at all. Uh, individual contributors and the skill set that makes you an amazing developer and a, an amazing individual contributor does not translate uh, over to leadership and technology leadership. It requires a great deal of, of personal growth, learning some new skills, learning some things that you probably aren't good with, good at. And uh, the people leading skills, yeah, are, are very different. So that was, a, that was a lesson that I had to learn that, that there was this whole portfolio of skills that I need to develop and learn in order to be good at this, basically. So moving on, uh, you, you have to be comfortable with conflict. And I was definitely somebody in my younger years where a bit conflict averse wanted to kind of do the right thing, make sure you don't offend people, you don't want to make enemies, you you want to deliver for people and all of this, you want to ensure that uh, everyone is getting along, that kind of thing. And uh, the flip side of this is not true, being completely disagreeable all the time is is not effective, but being highly agreeable and, and wanting to avoid conflict can uh, run you into a lot of problems. I, I learned that lesson the hard way when I started becoming a leader, because if you have to have some hard conversations with people or you need to push back on things because you you know intuitively that the path you're going down is not right, but you're maybe avoiding directness or you're avoiding confrontation a bit because, um, hey, you're trying to make sure that everybody is, is happy, that can uh, end up causing you way more problems. And, uh, and you may think you're doing the right thing for somebody by not having a hard conversation with them but you're really not. And uh, that was a critical lesson I got to learn as I moved into people leadership and had to interact with people and have those hard conversations with, uh, with individuals. So next, this was kind of mentioned in previous talks, your, your job morphs a bit from building ideas to selling ideas. So that whole concept of buy-in is, is key. So now in order to get your ideas across not only do you have to develop these ideas and have and set direction and intelligently come up with that direction just because you have a great idea and you have great direction and you may have all the data supporting that that this is the way to go uh, there that's only half of the way there you, selling that idea or selling that direction becomes a whole other skill set so not only do you have to think that through, get the right data? But yeah, communicating to both your team, because you need to sell your team or the people that are working on the direction, that this is a great way to go and we all need to rally behind it. But you may have other leaders in the organization that uh, you also need to sell that idea to. And in a large organization, not everybody could be technical. So an idea that is highly technical ideas or, or directions that have a high technical component could make a lot of sense to technical individuals, but selling that to somebody who is, is maybe non-technical, they come from a different background, maybe they're from a finance lens or an HR lens or, or something like that. It's a very different skill set to get them to buy into those kind of ideas. So that was a great lesson for me. And uh, being able to try to sell these ideas, there was a lot to learn doing that and a lot to learn kind of with those interactions with those people. 
So the next lesson I had is uh, interacting with machines and uh, interacting with people are, are very different. This may seem very obvious to, to some people, but uh, for me, it's, it's all about those soft skills. And a lot of these lessons that I learned were refining soft skills. As you go down that leadership position, a strong technical background doesn't set you up for success there, as mentioned uh, earlier, that uh, those soft skills, you, you may think that, well, I know how to interact very logically. When I write code, I can very precisely tell the machine what I'm looking for and how I would expect it to behave and do all that. That really doesn't translate when you have uh, teams of people, when you're working with individuals, you know, having one-on-ones with them, trying to coach and trying to mentor them, just, you know, listing out exactly what you're expecting and hoping to, to get exactly that expectation that the world doesn't work like that. People are, are very emotional creatures. Even the most logical people are very emotional creatures. So th that whole mentality that you may have from a strong technical side, which is maybe directness and, and logical approaches to things, that, that doesn't work for everybody. It does work for some. Some people tend to be a little bit more logical, but uh, honestly, it doesn't work for everybody. So having that that approach and only that approach, not uh, yeah, not the full not the full set of skills that you'll need to succeed. So that was a big lesson for me, learning to round out approaching conversations from from people who are maybe not necessarily overly logical focused and and appreciate directness. So that was a great lesson. The next one, you're no longer working on your own. As you scale and, and you're building bigger teams and you're adding more people to your team, uh, you're uh, not the only one anymore. And I've noticed this in myself and also some very strong developers is that uh, when, when there's a crisis or we have a strict deadline or we really got to get something done, a lot of those people will just power up heads down and try to solve that problem. And uh, that is, is not the way to, to solve very complicated problems. You can do a lot. You could be a crazy A player or a rock star developer with a ton of different skills, but it just gets to a level where that's not sustainable anymore. Like we've heard in previous talks, that idea of, well, I'll just do my work during the day and then I'll just go home and I'll finish the rest of the work that, that I need to do. That's a great recipe for burning out. And to be honest, you're, um, you're doing your teams a disservice and uh, you're doing yourself a big disservice there. You really have to learn how to delegate that stuff down and, and give it to people and let people take over that kind of thing instead of you owning it. And uh, one of the lessons in that delegation that I had to learn is I had to delegate a lot of really fun stuff. As a strong technical person, I love to just jump into these technically hard problems. And uh, and and then as I, I grew teams and I, and I had people that I could delegate down to, if there was a juicy problem or a crazy bug, uh, you have to force yourself to say, no, I'm not gonna spend half of my day uh, you know, pursuing some kind of really cool technical problem or, or juicy bug. You, you have to do some of your other more higher level things and just allow some people to to work on that stuff. And and they could be junior and they may not know as, as much as you do or something about a, a specific space. But the reason you got good is because you took those kind of things on. And uh, as a leader, you have to grow your individuals. You have to have them the opportunity to try these really hard things and, and kind of suffer through it and succeed. And, and uh, you know, that that's that's a big focus as a leader. Don't don't take those opportunities away from people. So the next lesson that uh, I learned is there are other paths. People leader and climbing this org chart is not the only way to progress. And I'm happy to hear that, you know, a lot of tech companies are embracing this now, that idea that there is a technical track and there is a people leader track. I've noticed in, in some more traditional companies, there's this thought that, well, if you're good at what you're doing, then you just get promoted and you eventually start leading people. And I think there's a saying that in some organizations, you're promoted up to your highest level in, of incompetency because you're pushed towards this track of, well, you gotta be a manager because you were a really good employee. Oh, you gotta be a director because you were a really good manager. And there's kind of push towards this. I've actually heard this a lot from people 
and uh, individuals on my team that they feel the need to climb this ladder, that uh, somehow your position in an org chart, like the further you go up the org chart, there's some correlation to your success in life or your su success in your career, and that you have to be getting promotions and have bigger teams. That's, that's really not true. And I can say when I was younger, I felt that a little bit more because, you know, from what I saw early on is that's how jobs work. You, you become the manager when you're competent and all of that. Tech really doesn't work that way. And it's starting to embrace the, the thought of that technical track. And if you're not great with people and that's not what you want to be doing and it doesn't bring you joy, uh, getting to that position and spending the rest of your life and rest of your career doing those kind of activities will not necessarily lead you well it won't lead you to to fulfillment in that role so there are other paths and it's okay to take that um th there's big trade-offs when you move into leadership you're doing more meetings you're you're doing a lot more talking and a lot less coding that kind of thing so if that's not what excites you and gets you going that's fine there are other ways forward so and then one of the last lessons that i really learned here is communication is critical and uh, when I was much younger, I was definitely someone that tried to work behind the scenes. I wanted to make sure everything is running smoothly and just kind of like keep quiet, make sure all the wires are plugged in and there's no sparks, like that kind of analogy. And uh, you, you, can't, you can't behave like that as you move up the leadership quote, up the leadership train. I think Warren Buffett said something, if you, if you can't communicate and talk to other people and get your uh, ideas across, you're giving up on your potential. So there's a lot of value into even over communicating what's going on, what you're seeing, that sort of stuff. You know, a big thing of this is you're not communicating for yourself anymore. You have some teens under you. You need to celebrate their successes. You need to communicate what they're doing because there can be a there can be a scenario where within an organization, stories can start to form about, oh, you know, that team, they they underperform or something like that. And that could be very far from the truth. So learning to communicate within an organization and uh, being able to, to do that effectively, share those stories, change that stuff, that, that falls on you as a leader. And it's a, a very important skill to have. And, and something that took me a while will probably continue to take me the rest of my career to develop and, and learn. So those were kind of the big key lessons that I learned. And uh, I wanted to put... A talking point in here about why do this. I, I don't want to I don't want to imply that yeah it's really hard doing this leadership track. Uh, it, it'll be very difficult. There'll be a lot of failures. That's very far from the truth. I'm not trying to say to people avoid this because it's so hard. I just want to talk about some of the amazing things that happen when you go down this uh, path. So one of the lessons that I learned is you know growing up. Uh, you know, in the 90s and, and hearing these stories during the dot com boom, there was that concept of, you know, people starting these startups in their garage or their basement. You know, you can be a great coder and you can build a billion dollar company out of your basement that that may happen occasionally, but that is less and less true. And to build something, if your goal is to even build your own company and, you know, become your own CEO and do all of that, having coding skills is is great you know that that will help you build a product if that's the path that you want to go down but these other skills and interacting with people building teams being a true leader all of this stuff you really do need those skills and they can be an, a batch of uncomfortable skills for for somebody that may be more introverted and and want to focus on the technology side but they're very valuable skills and they're insanely transferable to anything that you may do in life. And uh, it can be incredibly fulfilling when, when you build teams, when you build individuals or you mentor individuals and uh, they come back to you even after they've left the organization and say, you know, I really appreciate what you did. And maybe they have an amazing career now. And part of that was because of something that you did. You helped mentor them, you helped move them on, that sort of thing. So. I think there is there's huge value in these skills, even though depending on your personality, it may not seem seem great. One of my favorite quotes that I based my career around is, uh, and I forget who who to attribute it to, but it's uh, a a ship is safe in the harbor, 
but that's not what ships are for. So my, my uh, closing kind of remark here is that this may be an uncomfortable journey to go down leadership and, and that kind of thing. And you may be an amazing coder or developer and want to continue to do that. But there's an amazing event, adventure and a ton of growth and a ton of personal growth, lots of learnings that are available for you if you just sail out of the harbor and, and move towards this. So with that, thank you so much. I uh, enjoyed, enjoyed the talk. You can connect with me on, on LinkedIn. And uh, I think we'll open it up uh, for questions there. So over to you, Adam.